All right, guys, let's talk about fat. Now, keto is confusing and it's so simple because how many friggin' videos can I do on keto? Like, it's not that complicated and the only thing that complicates ketogenesis is the barrage of misinformation on the internet from people looking at what other people do and then copying it or one person reading another person's study that lasted a month, which is subjective. So what you want to do is you want to experiment over time. Now, if you're having extreme hypoglycemia or thyroid problems or adrenal insufficiency, then you got to go off because you can do more damage or physiological rebound insulin resistance. But if you don't have those physical reactions or autoimmune reactions, then you have to experiment. Now, here's what I've done with myself. I've done this for nearly 10 years. And also, I work with thousands of people. Yes. Yes. Now, coconut oil, MCT oil. Let's break it down. MCT oil is processed. It doesn't have any lower acid. So I start to see sort of the lacking of the lower acid benefits. So lower acids, antimicrobial, antiviral, and it's amazing for your immune system. Now, some of you guys get stomach aches from it because of the caprylic acid. Your body doesn't digest it well in the beginning. You have to train the body to digest it, develop the enzymes to break down that type of fat. Now, some people have histamine intolerance or they have sensitivities or allergies to coconuts and then they can't take that type of fat at all. And then the MCT, which is 100% or 99, 98, 99 point or 98.8 or 9 percent MCT, which is a small medium chain triglyceride fat molecules where the body doesn't need a gallbladder to help break it down to get into the bloodstream to be used. So with that said, uh, some people have an aversion and have stomach issues and nausea from breaking down the MCT and the coconut oil. Now the inverse to that is, or conversely, you've got people who've got gallbladder disease or issues or stones or sludge. And because the MCT passes the gallbladder, they can digest coconut oil <laughs> and MCT oil than they do long chain fats, which are called LCTs. But MCT, pure MCT can help, uh, in some people, not all, uh, boost the level of your ketones, but not sustain them. The problem is the wavering amounts of blood sugar. So if your blood sugar is high and your ketones are in a sweet spot around a 2.5, Sometimes and often, a lot of those ketones are lost within the urine because your glucose is too high. So the brain is still wanting to metabolize and use glucose as its energy, even though it's not enough to restore glycogen because you've dumped all the starches and sugars. And so people do these high amounts of coconut oil and MCT, MCT oil, and they're like, yeah, I do about 150 grams of coconut oil. And I'm like, you can tell that their glucose is skyrocketing. It's rebounding and it's going higher and higher and higher because they're not having the fatty acid balance that you would find in animal fat, the monosaturated and polyunsaturated fats. So because of this, see, you know, I said once that we're not made out of coconuts and people are like, well, we didn't do keto and we didn't do this. And we, yeah, we didn't do all those things. The only thing that we could do is mimic nature as best as we can. Now the Asians got it down, yo, because like, they still are eating eyeballs and brains and tongue and all of these super high nutrient dense proteins that are not high in protein, but actually high in fat, which has a lot of fat soluble vitamins. And here in the West, we're eating tuna and chicken breast. Really though? Trying to avoid fat. And it just, I don't understand why people don't realize the nutrient density in the fatty bits of the animal with fat soluble vitamins and minerals in the fattier bits of an animal animal that's why people are saying eat liver because it's so nutrient dense but it's not a lean organ people so the composition the fat composition of an animal is similar to human especially pigs some animals are very much closer to us genetically than uh, plants. 
you got to realize that plants have a lot of fiber. So the, the, the makeup of a plant is divided into different things. You've got micronutrients, you've got uh, carotenoids and flavonoids, you've got antioxidants, you've got these types of um, yeah, antioxidant benefits, but you don't get the chunky fat soluble vitamins like you would from organ meats because of the fiber. Now, if we didn't have messed up guts, we wouldn't need all that fiber. So that's why when you look at the Inuit and the Maasai and some of these cultures that ate mostly they, they, because of the barren landscapes, think about Europe. I mean, the amount of vegetation you can get is only seasonally. And I used to live in Europe. It is butt cold and dark most of the year. So you have to fish and hunt to have sustenance. So the animal fats is what I've noticed by coaching people for so long is what really people start to balance their blood sugar. And this is over and over and over again that once they stop trying to use olive oil and you have to worry about the oxidation of that olive oil and people are using it in the cooking process which oxidizes it even more. And then they're avoiding the animal fats because they think they're going to get a heart attack or they're going to gain weight. And then they don't adapt. Their blood sugar keeps rebounding, going higher and higher. And then they start to have autoimmune responses. And so what I've noticed, now you don't have to eat a lot of butter. And yes, we should not be, you know, the, the milk proteins from a cow are, they're just fracked up. They're designed to take a baby calf and grow into a huge ass 2,000 pound bull. So most people can handle butter, but those tiny infinitesimally small amounts of whey and casein can still create issues with a lot of people. But there's all other types of long chain triglycerides from animal fat that people do very well on where their ketones remain constant and their glucose begins to stabilize in a ketogenic zone. All right, guys, if you want to learn more, you can go to stephanieperson.com. I will describe more of this uh, type of information in my book, which I'm still writing. And until then, you can go to stephanieperson.com. I'm still doing a keto course. I'm still doing consultations. You can go to Stephanie, the business person, on my Facebook fan page or Stephanie Ketogenic on my Instagram. And I haven't done a video up to seven minutes in a long time. And I'm out because I got some energy. Peace.